When you think innovate, 1970s communist-style architecture doesn't often come to mind. But the design studio 4 of 7 in Belgrade, Serbia, converted an aging landmark once known as the Danube Flower into a fitness center. Called Wellness Sky, it's a sight for everyone in Belgrade to behold and a beacon calling on people to come in and get a workout. Our second idea comes from Switzerland. Invented by Gerd Niemöller, the Universal World House is made from cellulose, extracted from recycled newspaper and cardboard. It weighs about 800 kilograms and comes with plumbing and eight built-in beds. Its versatile structure allows the walls to open up to take advantage of daylight and natural ventilation. And finally, we told you about it earlier, Mazdar, hoping to be the world's most sustainable city. Plans include building the largest grid-connected solar plant in the Middle East. In fact, 90% of the developments in Mazdar will be powered by the sun. CNN Stan Grant takes us on a tour of this eco-oasis in the United Arab Emirates. In the desert of the United Arab Emirates, a new city is blooming. They call it Mazdar, or the source in Arabic. On the outskirts of Abu Dhabi, Mazdar city is a construction site right now. But here, they think big. We're talking about 90,000 people, 50,000 living, 40,000 commuting. That will uh, uh, be hosted in a city of six square kilometers. Clean and green, that's the catch cry. The world's first zero carbon, zero waste city. 90% of the development's power from the sun. Here is the engine room, a solar panel farm in the desert. Ultimately, there will be nearly 90,000 panels here, enough to power phase one of the city and the construction of the rest. Solar remains much more expensive than gas, which currently powers Abu Dhabi. But Mazda's director says he has the answer. Cost more, use less. Exactly. Automatically use less because of the design and the planning of the city. Uh, narrow streets, all shaded, buildings shading over each other, cooling loads. Cars will be banned at Mazda. Everyone will be transported by specially designed, clean, space-age style people movers. The plan is somewhere around two to three thousand of these vehicles. Abu Dhabi, a powerhouse of oil production, 10% of world supply, wants to lead the world in finding alternative sources of power. The Abu Dhabi government has pumped 15 billion US dollars into the venture. In September this year, it turns from dream to reality. The first residents move in. The source will become the future. Stan Grant, CNN, Abu Dhabi. The future doesn't look too bright for a tiny group of islands in the South Pacific. Tuvalu is a place you've probably never heard of. But CNN's Kyung Lao report, scientists say, is at the center of concerns over climate change. Imagine a place in harmony with nature. The people live off the sea and the soil and produce few emissions. This is Tuvalu, a group of nine tiny islands in the South Pacific. Some 10,000 people live here, and their way of life is dying. Suichi Endo captured these images. The waters around Tuvalu are rising, he says, because of global warming. Erosion of the shores, farmland destroyed. Tuvalu is drowning. No point on Tuvalu is higher than four and a half meters above sea level. The government and many experts believe the islands could one day disappear under rising water. Endo, once an architect, was so moved by Tuvalu's plight, he ditched his nine to five job and started taking pictures. The goal, to shoot 10,000 pictures, mainly of Tuvalu's people, bringing the plight of a small island nation to a global audience. Global warming's impact is distant to us, says Endo. The goal of the 10,000 project is to destroy this distance. For example, look at this boy, says Endo. His name is Peach. He's 13. His house floods regularly. He dreams of a future without the rising waters. Endo says Peach and the thousands of other Tuvalu residents pay for this, the waste and the emissions produced by nearby Japan and other developed nations. Endo hopes by seeing the faces and hearing the stories, people will think twice about the cost of their lifestyles to the environment. I want to save the people of Tuvalu, but I also want to preserve the future for developed nations. Just saving Tuvalu isn't enough. I'm doing this project to protect my future and your future. When I complete both, I will feel I've accomplished something. Preserving the future 
one small island at a time. The islands of Tuvalu are also on the mind of a prominent author. Mark Linus has written several books on the environment, including Six Degrees, Our Future on a Hotter Planet. He recently spoke with us over the internet and says the effects of rising water levels aren't as distant as they may seem. Well, Tuvalu is probably going to be the first country to be wiped off the face of the map as a result of global warming because it's so vulnerable to sea level rise. I mean, most of the land area, because this is just a, a very small set of coral atoll islands, um, is only half a meter above sea level, and average sea levels could have risen at least uh, somewhat more than that by the end of the century. So Tuvalu as a whole will simply cease to exist. And of course, this is a, 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 an unprecedented event. I don't think there's any uh, any any equivalent event in, in recent history where an entire country has actually ceased to exist geographically. As temperatures rise generally, uh, we're going to be seeing climate zones shifting essentially. So the climate that we have here in the UK, where I'm talking to you from, uh, will be similar to the climate they now have in southern France or Spain in, in 40 or 50 years' time. So you can imagine what the impact of, of that is going to be on, on, you know, on human society and, of course, on, on wildlife. Any scientist will say to you, you can't describe a single event to, uh, to, to climate change. I mean, there was a big debate about Hurricane Katrina when that hit New Orleans in 2005. Was that a climate change event? Um, certainly, it was probably aggravated by climate change because as the seas get warmer, there's more energy available to make hurricanes uh, and, and tro other tropical storms stronger. Um, and so it, it seems very likely that extreme weather is going to be on the rise and that um, insurance pre premiums are going to go up. There's going to be large parts of the world where people won't be able to get insurance. Um, if you're living too close to the coast, then you'll be on the firing line. In other parts of the world, it's flooding from rivers. I mean, here in the UK, we also we see a lot, a lot of increased flooding now because rivers are getting higher and, and there's more rainfall falling um, in, in all different seasons. Um, so it's, it's going to be quite tough for people to adapt to this. We can all start reducing our carbon footprint with the flip of a switch or the click of a mouse. Experts say simply turning off the lights when you leave your home or office can have huge results in terms of energy efficiency. Also, make sure that when your computer is not in use, it goes into sleep mode. That can save as much as 25% of the energy it uses. Christy Lu Stout is in Hong Kong with more stats and some sage advice on how to avoid waste and save money by using some internet-based tools. What is the environmental impact of the workplace? Here it is in numbers. The average office worker goes through 10,000 sheets of paper a year and about a trillion pieces of paper are used in copiers and printers in the U.S. Now, 70% of waste in a typical office is paper, so we've come across a few good online tools that can help us cut down on printing those unnecessary pages. Now, these programs filter out unwanted ads and mostly blank pages, allowing you to print only what you need off the web. Now, there are several companies offering software that you could download for free. HP has one. There's another one out there called Fine Print, but the one that we've tested is called Green Print. So let's say we bring up the Eco Solutions website. And I want to take a look at this article here, Biofuels Take to the Skies. Go up here, click on print, and the article comes up in the green print world uh, window. Now, I can see on this page, it's mainly unwanted text, pictures, stuff I don't want to print. So I can double click on that, it turns red, that page has been removed by me. And on this page here, I have the option to remove unwanted images, go to tools, remove all images, they're gone. Easy enough, I go to print, and it's done. After it's done to print, a little icon pops up. You click on that, and I can see today, thanks to using green print, I have saved three sheets of paper and 40 cents, and that feels good.